Hello everyone, welcome inside the Red Earth Production Studios for this edition of YBM Cast, powered by Game 7 Baseball, Game7Baseball.com. It's here, the season's here, it's just, it's time to get going. Um, I'm sure you have your team registered, we're going to see you on some Saturdays. Our first opening day is the Spring Showdown out at Warrington, New Turf Fields. We're looking forward to it all the way to the World Series Game7Baseball.com. If you got some space left, if you got something you need to do, there it is. Boom. The World Series, uh, they got one in Tennessee. They got one in St. Louis here. So make sure you go check out Game7Baseball.com. Also, just an FYI, uh, on the 23rd here real quick, uh, congratulations, Blake Landsbaum. He was our Super 7 scholarship award winner this year thousand dollar scholarship going to blake nice uh i appreciate dave and dave with game seven baseball for um helping us with this scholarship we got another one coming up this year 2024 who's it going to be our top award winners uh for our 14 new championships they they get uh automatically entered got to write an essay though oh <laughs> yeah all yeah. right, <laughs> and every year they've done it. Um, Kevin, you'll get ki- you'll get a kick out of this. Um, we were with uh, Diego uh, <clears throat> a couple weekends ago out there for the prep baseball, the Southern Illinois preseason ID. I'm sitting on the chair and I'm talking to these two kids from Edwardsville, and it didn't dawn on me. I should have known. Sean Murphy is one of them. He was our first scholarship award winner oh wow when we did the first one gave that first thousand dollars away it was sean murphy and here i am sitting here at a prep baseball report uh preseason id talking to him interviewing him. he's doing well he's playing at edwardsville that's awesome it was it was really cool and uh i had to smack myself because i'm he's like yeah yeah i'm that guy <laughs> <laughs> the gray hair sucking uh, my yeah. will to live man <laughs> <laughs> But it was cool. It was really neat seeing that. Um, so, uh, Game 7 Baseball, a lot of great stuff going on. We appreciate Dave and Dave and the partnership we have with them. So, Game7Baseball.com. Let's get ready. On the Prime Sports Midwest, call and link today, as always, the guru. <laughs> Kevin Mulder, how you doing, buddy? Uh, hey, you know what? I'm doing wonderful. We've been getting great weather, and it, uh, you know, we're in the full swing of high school practice. And uh, next week we begin uh, the real thing. So it's exciting times. He's he's you can tell, man. He's pumped up. Oh, he's fired up. Yeah, yeah. And I got in the studio here today, Mr. Dave Wiggins, head coach, Webster Groves, recruits baseball coach. Good to see you, man. Good to see you. I love being on this show, and it's great to be back. It's been a while. It's been a little bit, yep. (laughs) It's been a while. Uh, We got, and we'll have maybe a few fireworks. It's a good thing he's here and Kevin's there. The Kirkwood Webster Groves rivalry is kind of hopefully doesn't boil over here. (laughs) Not quite. Strictly (laughs) professional here. We're we're no. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, man. You guys uh, coming off a uh, season last year, you did what you did. Uh, I think you had uh, a pretty decent season for where you were at. Yeah, it wasn't it wasn't terrible. Obviously, you know we we want to win more games than lose games. Um, so you know having a a not five hundred record is never what we're looking for. But you know we got off to a pretty hot start. Um, but we play. I mean, I've said it before. We play a, a pretty tough schedule mm-hmm. for being a class five team and. You know, we want to make sure that when we get into districts, we haven't seen, we haven't seen any, or we don't see something we haven't seen before. Um, and, you know, we're, we're going to take some L's during the season because we play a strong schedule and, and we're okay with that. There you go. Kevin, so I, I heard through the grapevine you're volunteering a little bit over there at Kirkwood. Uh <laughs> We're helping. We're helping out a little bit. Yeah, we're helping out. Um, How's it looking over there, bud? You know what? The and uh, I was just about to ask this to Coach Wiggins. Um, Kirkwood got a brand new, beautiful uh, turf facility. Uh, redone really the whole baseball field. New cages and 
they did a phenomenal job on this and um webster groves also got a game changer and coach wiggins you want to talk about your new newest uh game changing addition absolutely um today's actually the first day we're gonna get to practice on it so <clears throat> everyone's pretty fired up right now i sent the message out to the boys and I'm already getting pictures from freshmen with thumbs up and big smiles. So, yeah, you, know, you, you got to love that. Um, we've been at Afton Athletic the last week and a half, you know, doing what we can do there. And, and we're very appreciative for being able to use that field. But just having an all turf complex and, you know, the, the cage setup that we have, you know, last the last 20 or so years, we've had one cage in left field on the visiting side and we haven't really used it all that much. Um, you know, now we have a 75 foot long cage on our side, on the right field side. Uh, we could split it in half. We can have BP on both ends. We could throw a machine in there. We could throw a live in there, uh, put a portable mound in there. Um, and then we have the same size cage in left field as well. So uh, just <clears throat> the opportunity for better practices, um, you know, more more organized practices with having three levels, having a freshman JV and varsity out on one field. It just gives us so much more uh, versatility and, and abilities to, you know, make sure that, you know, players one through 50 are getting the same amount of reps and the same amount of same amount of instruction and, and coaching that they need during practice. Uh, just can't I can't even express how excited we are. And haven't really even gotten to try it out yet. So, you know, maybe we'll find some things that we didn't know that, that make it even better than I think it could be. So, you know, we're we're pretty pumped. A I lot know. of extra time for development and skill instruction, right, yes, Coach? Yes, without a doubt. Yeah, you're not spending 20 minutes, you know, at the end of practice breaking things down. I'm not getting there at noon for a 4 o'clock game, getting the field ready. You know, it's uh, little things like that that just – they really, the moment you get out there and you're warmed up, you're ready to go. There's no setup. There's really no breakdown except for a couple little things. So it's uh, it's going to be fun. I go back to Co Coach Montgomery at uh, championships last year. I was talking to him. They got, Festus got oh, yeah. a turf field a couple years ago. Yeah. And he said this to me. He says, it made all the difference in the world. Yeah. He said, just kind of what you said there, Kevin – being able to get more practice in the drills, the skill, the ability to work at the game a little bit different and a little bit better uh, made all the difference in the world. I believe our infield yeah. defense is going to be better because of it. I, I really do. I, I talked to <clears throat> Coach Gurno, who's um, Montgomery's assistant at Festus, the other day, and he said our, our infield defense was significantly better, you know, after we got that turf infield. So, yeah, yeah, it should be sweet. <laughs> that is awesome and not to mention the uh you can retire from being a weatherman and trying to predict everything <laughs> and right. it, it, stressing out about whether you need to have a team come over or not come over because it may or may not rain two hours before the game but you know it's going to be out by four o'clock and um it's a lot less, it's a lot off a, a, a coaches and an administrator's plate there for sure. Having that, which absolutely in the players too. You you, you said it too. It, it takes a, a small army to take care and maintain a field properly. Right. Um, it also is wildly beneficial to those players as we get them after the game, they're able to get home and get to their studies. I'm sure they're gonna go straight and do that. Um oh, so yeah, for sure. um extra time for academics as well. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh Yes, that's what they're going to do. Uh, they're student athletes, right? Yes. Student first. <laughs> that's right. I, I want to do this, Kevin, since we got you guys here, and I think this is a great opportunity. We didn't get to the Suburban St. Louis uh, Conference. And I, I'm fired up for this because the Suburban needs some love. Right? <laughs> so we're going to start, though. We'll start in the Red Pool since uh, Coach Wiggins is on as a guest. You, you guys are in the Red Pool, Hazelwood West, Ladue. Northwest, uh, is it just Northwest High School or is it Northwest Cedar High School? Um, they call it Northwest Cedar Hill, but okay. we all know it as Northwest. Yeah, okay. same thing. <laughs> Oakville, I think the elephant in the room there. Uh, they got some arms. Yeah. <laughs> They've got um, some arms. Yeah. Parkway Central, which is always a tough team. They're always tough. Uh, Parkway South, of course, you're going to have to Talk face Kellen Brink. And, and Ahern. Yes. And Sullivan. <laughs> yeah. They've They're, got three. 
Sekman, which is always a monster, uh, and, and I think they're going to be good again this year. And they then you it. guys are there. I just yeah. went in alphabetical <laughs> order. No offense. Oh, it's totally okay. <laughs> I know we're at W. Um, I believe Ledoux has moved down uh, to the green pool, the third pool. Um, and I want to say, if I can look. I'll have to go look and check that because I thought they were still up in the red. I think it's next year they're moving. So this area back here is basically production. Um, they do a lot of the artwork down back here. They do the production. So any of that stuff that comes in off of, we'll say, our fanware stores, stuff that comes in off the team stores, a lot of the coaches wear, a lot of the last minute, hey, we got to have it in the next 10 minutes stuff, that all comes back here. This area is where all the day-to-day -day stuff that comes in really goes through. The retail store is its own little entity. This is where the real work is done. I have a Ladue player on my 16U team, and I'm okay. like 95% sure. All right. But it, it is what it is. No, know? I'll look. I'll look because yeah. I'll correct this. Because uh, I did this. I spent some time um, going through this. You can go to uh, uh, youthbaseballmidwest.com. We have the GAC previews. I'm getting ready to do a little bit more here. Uh, we have our schedule up. Um, the GAC game of the week, our Missouri showcase, our Friday night lights. We have an Illinois showcase this year. Nice. All of the schedules up on youthbaseballmidwest.com. You can go to the high school baseball page. I have a list of the GAC, the St. Louis suburban. I went through Southwest Missouri and got all the conferences corrected. Wonderful. I have links to, I think the ozone does a great job down there with, uh, Southwest Missouri. Uh, all the pre all the previews that we have for those teams are linked here from the Big Eight Conference to the Ozark Mountain, Mid Lakes, Central Ozark Conference, which is a big conference now. There's wow. 14 teams in that bad boy. Uh, we got Jeffco and just a few others here that we have listed, and the Kansas City Suburban. So you can kind of go check and see where everybody's kind of at. We had a great uh, we're, we we got a chance to talk with um, Levi. Yasina, I believe is, I, I probably butchered that again. He's the Ellsbury head coach. Okay. He's coming up and whatnot. Yeah. So small, large, great stuff. Just thought I'd plug that real quick yeah, before we get back to this. So I want to be correct. So if we, yeah. if I need to move. Ledoux. I'm fairly certain. I'm fairly certain. Okay. Um, what I like about the Red Pool, I know that, you know, in the, in the suburban, they tier the teams and, and every year we get to decide if we want to move up or down. Gotcha. Um, what I love about the Red Pool is even though we're a class five school, there's a lot of class six schools in the Red Pool. Yeah. Um, there's schools with big arms, there's schools with big time hitters. Um, it, you've, my goodness, you've got to, you've really got to strap it on when you're competing in that conference, even though it's a quote unquote second tier. Uh, there's, there's teams in that Red Pool that can beat teams in the Yellow Pool. <clears throat> I agree. Yeah. Oh, I agree. What do you think, Kevin? Oh, 100%. Uh, yeah, we, we talk about that all the time. Um, a lot of times, um, you know, and Coach Wiggins, know that, uh, sometimes the separators between the larger school and the smaller school is just pitching depth, and you catch a team on the, the wrong day or the right day, depending on which side of the coin you're at. If they got their guy ready, he's good enough to beat anybody. But if you maybe play out seven games, they don't have the depth to – to right. by game three or by game four, they they've kind of run dry on the pitching. Whereas sometimes the larger school can keep coming at you with more and more arms. Absolutely, yeah. So you, you guys will play these each one of these teams at least once, or you go twice? At least once. At least, at least once. once in the Red Pool. Yep. Yellow okay. Yellow does a two game series, um, but we play in the Red Pool. We play each team at least once. So where do you see yourself finishing here in this Red Pool? You know, that's a good question. Um, I feel like as the years have gone on, a lot of schools haven't really, especially in our pool, haven't really treated conference as though it's a must-win type situation anymore. Gotcha. Um, you know, I, I try to set up my rotation each week to where, you know, my guys are getting four to five days rest. Um, I, I look at it to where my one is facing what I believe to be 
the better team that week, but sometimes it doesn't work out that way. Um, I mean, those schools are those schools are tough. Yeah. I, I really like our rotation, and I've seen some really good things from our offense in our live settings these last couple of days. Um, you know, we've we've typically finished towards the bottom in that pool. We've we've gotten beat up a little bit. I'd like to see us compete. I'd like to see us at least you know find a way to to have a, a slightly above 500 record in that conference, and that's going to be hard to do, especially with the arms that those schools are bringing. Um, Sekman won it last year. It was funny about Sekman is they moved up from the green pool last year, which when they moved into our pool, I, I told people, I said, Sekman's going to win our conference. I, I know who they have. I know the arms they have. I know their offense. They're a large school. Um, and they did, they, I think they only lost one game in our, in our conference. Wow. And they were, <clears throat> they were very tough. Uh, they have, they've got some big arms, some big bats. Um, and you know, coach Hagedor coaches them hard over there. I, when you look at this, I think between Oakville and Sekman, I think those are the two teams within this in this pool, Kevin, uh, that stand out uh, offensively and and with pitching. Um, Parkway Sekman, South, Parkway <clears throat> South. I know they're there, but yeah. I, I don't know if they have offensive. We and we're gonna have we got we got a game with Parkway South on the schedule this oh, year. Oh, nice. Okay. So we're gonna be at their house. They got got Desmet coming in. Oh, wonderful. Okay. So we got a Desmet Parkway. Uh, That's gonna be game. a good battle I think there. That'll be a fun. That's one. gonna be no. a real good battle. <laughs> So we're looking forward to that, and uh, that's why I want it because I'm hoping we get to see Kellen Brink. I don't know if we will. It's yeah. early in the week. Right. We'll see. Uh, I, but I'm, I, Kellen Brink is special, obviously, right? Lefty's right. been up to 95, but, I mean, Eddie Ahern, if you look at his numbers from last year, he was unbelievable. Um, in, in our conference, I, I believe that we voted him. He was, he was like one vote away from being conference player of the year as a junior. Wow. And missed out to um, uh, Sean Kang, who's now at SIUE. But Eddie could do it on both sides of the baseball. He hits in the middle of the order. He's 88-91. Um, he's, he's a fierce competitor, three-sport athlete, football, basketball, baseball. Um, so, I mean, you got a 1-2 in Kellen Brink and Ahern. And then you bring the junior Luke Sullivan in, who's been up to 88-89 as well with pinpoint command. And their lineup bangs. Like, there's some names that people don't know yet, but – they can hit. <laughs> so they, they concern me greatly. Um, they got some sophomores they called up that can really swing it. They've got a, the Bennett's a senior, correct? Yeah. yeah uh, got, Charlie ben, Bennett. Yes. Charlie Bennett. Yeah. Flat out rake from the left side. So I, I think Foster they got runner. a really good shot. <clears throat> Go ahead, Kevin. I, I, I agree. Uh, I, I think that's, there's some real depth in there and, you know, coach Wiggins. Uh, I mean, that's, you want to talk about being prepared for district play. Um, you're going to see a legit number one from all three of those schools in Sacramento, Oakville and Parkway South. And, and even their number twos, you could argue are number one quality. Um, yes. I, yeah. They each all, they all have kind of their strengths and weaknesses. I would agree, or, or maybe greater strengths. I really like that Sackman lineup. That is a deep yes, lineup it is. Um, <laughs> with, with not only just high school hitters, like these guys are legit college hitters. Um, yeah. Yep. You know, Ryan Bradford, Cody Brown, Nathan Higgins, a big fellow that can really swing the bat from the left side, Hayden Boyd, Zach Walters, um, you know, Caden Kohlberg's a two way, and there's a lot of firepower there. Uh, then you look over at Oakville, and, and they kind of have, you know, not certainly not. Um, a bad offense at all, but I would, I would consider that's a pretty scary pitching staff when you, yes, when you look at that, um, the, the way they line, line up there, um, on the mound, they got some, some major arm talent on the mound. They got a couple of young guys, They're young on the um, yeah. Coming, yeah. Um, so it, it'll be, um, uh, that will be interesting to see, you know, it's probably led by Adam Kilborn, uh, Assuming good health, um, the junior right-hander heading to Tennessee. You got C.J. Lake, the sophomore, who's going to be a name that's going to start popping up. That's a oh, two-way yeah. guy. Oh, yeah. That's a 90 mile per hour kid. That's a big physical kid that can also swing it. Um, we so they saw, have some. We saw C.J. at that preseason ID in Illinois. Kevin, he's a very talented he player. He is talented. Very physical. I mean, when you talk physicality for a sophomore, he's up there. 
Yeah. Like he, he doesn't look like a sophomore <laughs> doing anything. <laughs> no. But no. you got Gabe Hulzing from the left side, who's an upper 80s guy who competes on the bump and he can swing it in the top of their order. Jack Workowicz going to Wynnum Wood, lefty. I mean, I tell you, those, those three schools. Good luck, coach. Yeah. Hey, we're ready for <laughs> yeah. it, man. We're excited. Like we, we, we want to see the dudes. We want to face the best. Um, you know, we're here for it. And, you know, we, we may be a little Webster Groves, but we're used to it. So, <clears throat> Hey, that's, that's what it takes. Kevin, you talk about this all the time. If you're going to raise the level of your program, you got to go find the competition, right? Well, 100%. 100%. And, um, you know, I was going to ask you, Coach Wiggins, so obviously you have conference play. Uh, I'm sure those games take greater meaning than maybe a, a, a regular season game. Uh, but the way, how do you view this? Do you, is it all about preparing for district play? How do you, how do you balance that out? Uh, cause I know seeding, um, you know, you're trying to earn the best seed possible for district play. Does that kind of trump conference play in your opinion or how does yeah. that, how do you balance that out? And to us at Webster, obviously we want to win games in the regular season, but everything we're doing is getting ready for game one of districts and making sure that we have the lineup we're going to need for game one. We've got the rotation we need for that week. Um, and our strength of schedule sometimes helps us in terms of seating, you know, because we'll get a, we'll get a big win against a big school um, that some of the other schools in our district might not have. Um, and, and the schools that, that pay attention and, and understand strength of schedule usually are, are with us when it comes to, you know, garnering a one, two, or, or three seed vote versus, you know, being a lower seed because we have a, a lesser record. Um, <clears throat> you know, like last year, I think we ended up with the two uh, behind Parkway Central, I believe. Um, yeah, it was, feels like it was so long ago, but I guess it wasn't. Um, <clears throat> but, I mean, we, we are forward focused and we are thinking how can we be the best team possible for that first game of districts, because our goal this year is to win our district, which is something Webster Groves has rarely ever done. So yeah, that's, that is mindset number one for everybody, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior. How can we be the best team we can be on day one of district play? <clears throat> so as you head into this season, um, Let's take let's take a look at your ball club. Yeah. Um, I I, I want to start with um, you know obviously you lose what I would consider just from the outside what has to be your heart and soul of the team uh, and a special player in William Zahara. Yeah. Um, and now doing great things down at Missouri State already as a freshman getting on the field. Um, you, you lose a arguably the best catcher in the area um, or yeah. state even. Yeah. Um, start there, but I know you have a lot of pitching depth this season. Sure. Um, <clears throat> tell us a little bit about your ball club. You know, Williams, Williams catch and throw was obviously special. The big thing that, that he brought to our team defensively wasn't necessarily even that. It was just the fear in the other teams, coaches and base runners to actually run on him. <laughs> so our pitchers could be a little bit more deliberate and slower to the plate and not really have to worry about a guy going. Um, the attention to the run game didn't have to be as big as, as if there was a normal human behind the plate. Um, <clears throat> so that's something we really need to focus on and we have been focusing on with our pitchers is, hey, we've got a high school catcher back there now <laughs> and we've got to okay. make sure that, you know, we're, we're treating this a little differently. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> that's, been, that's been an adjustment. Um, you know, just can't I, I can't think of of a better player outside of Pete Fairbanks to come through Webster Groves High School in a long time, and it's a generational type player, and we'll miss him. But uh, we're moving on. Um, our staff, I think it's led by Jackson Torbett, who is a legit two way. Um, he's he's very toolsy. He can play the infield. He can play the outfield. He's quick. He can swing it. He can bunt. Um, just a very good athlete, one of the better football players on our football team. Uh, he's actually going to Central College, um, which is a Division three in Iowa, I believe. Um, and he's going to play baseball and football there. Now, he could have gone somewhere and been a pitcher at the D2 level. I truly believe that. He'll be 86, 88, um, probably one of the best high school curveballs I've ever seen. Um, he's, got, he's got the potential to be a legitimate ace for our staff, which is 
something that, that we, we haven't really had since Joe Ruziska left. Um, <clears throat> so we're looking at him. We're looking at Gus Lorenzo, who is just an absolute workhorse going to St. Charles Community College. Um, Gus is your pitcher definition of a cage rat. Uh, the dude absolutely lived in the facility this offseason, lived in the weight room. Um, I'm a huge fan of Gus, and, and he's going to see a lot of success this spring because of the work that he's put in. Uh, they're both seniors. Um, another senior arm, Drew Patrick, going to Maryville. Um, you know, talk about a, a plus plus stuff guy, 20 inches of horizontal on a mid-80s fastball, 20 inches of horizontal on a slider, 23 inches of horizontal on his changeup. Like the dude is, he's a very, very tough competitor on the mound. Um, and, you know, I think Maryville's getting a great guy in, in Drew. He's a big physical kid. He's also going to have to catch some for us. Uh, so I hate having pitchers who catch, but, you know, we're kind of in that position and we're going to have to be smart with, with how we do that. Um, that we've got a, a junior arm, um, Pierce Sturgeon, whose older brother Cole was one of our better arms the last couple of years. Uh, Pierce is a, a low 80s, just a little dude who gets on the mound and competes his butt off. I mean, he is, he is just a grinder out there. Uh, he doesn't give in. He pounds the strike zone with three pitches. Um, and then we have, you know, who was arguably our number two pitcher last year, who's a senior coming back, is Henry Biffer. Uh, long, loose, uh, mid-80s fastball with, with good off-speed pitches, good command, going to McKendry College. Um, I mean, I just – I don't know how many I just rattled off there, but, I mean, we have college pitchers in our program, and that's, that's huge for us. It's guys that are going off to pitch in college who have garnered the attention of coaches at the next level – who I believe are all going to take a step forward this year and and be even better than they were last year. Um, and there's guys I didn't that I didn't get a chance to name that we will run out on the mound, um, but but those are the ones that I believe are, are really going to be the ones that that go out there and and win us ball games. <clears throat> you got some solid options, and not to let this slide. Um... Former statesman uh, Joe Rosiska had a phenomenal outing oh, yeah. last weekend, going eight strong out innings, and yep. I believe has worked his way into the conference rotation down there at Belmont. So great to see oh, yeah. um, a local guy and your one of your former alumni um, doing big things on the college scene. Oh, it's just a special, not even a special pitcher, just a special person. I, Joe is one of the more mature high schoolers I'd ever been around. I just went about his business, was very regimented in his routine. Um, I mean, pitch one would be 90 and pitch 105 would be 90. Find me a high school arm yes. that, can, that can hold that velocity. Um, and, and that's how I knew, like, he'd go to Belmont and he'd do big things. So we're excited for Joe. <clears throat> that's awesome. How about off? How about offensively? How do you feel about the ball club offensively? What What are the yeah. strengths and wh wh who are who are the kind of the leaders from an offensive and defensive side there? Yeah, I think we would all agree that our best hitter this year is Joe Callis. Joe's a senior. He's been with us on the varsity level for four years now. Um, he's our starting left fielder. He's going to STLCC. Uh, Coach Goodrich uh, is excited about bringing Joe onto campus and, and what he can bring from from a bat perspective. Um, Joe, Joe's got pop. Joe's a big, strong boy. Um, Joe is a very, he's, he's very even keeled. Nothing really gets to him. No moments too big. Um, the joke I had about Joe the last couple of years is if you're 85 plus, he's going to light you up. If you're 75, he might swing early and, and, and not <laughs> touch the baseball. So something that Joe really worked on this off season was sitting back a little bit longer, seeing the ball a little bit deeper. Um, he took Torbett deep the other day in a 2-1 count. Um, absolutely destroyed a fastball to, to left center for a grand slam. That's always fun when that happens. Uh, he's showing the ability to hit the off-speed pitches better in these live in these live scrimmages we're having. Um, he could be a really big bat for us, uh, and, and that's something we need absolutely. Um, so we're looking to him to carry that offense. Uh, Drew Hauser shortstop probably one of the more more heady players I've ever coached uh, just just does things the right way he's really bought into our system uh, the other day um, playing shortstop runner on second soft liner to him a one hopper the, the runner on second kind of froze and then ran to third he picks it up throws it to third throws a dude out not many shortstops do that they pick it up throw it to first um, and, and Drew just understanding that we're trying to get 
outs on the left side of the infield versus on the right side and really buying into that has really elevated his game as a shortstop. Um, but he's kind of taken a step forward with the bat as well from what I see. He got a little bit more power uh, driving the ball the other way a little bit better this year. Um, Isaiah Sims going to Indiana Tech, um, uh, NAIA, obviously in Indiana. Uh, he's our starting center fielder. Um, just tons of ability from Isaiah, very athletic. He's got a lot of power. Uh, just trying to get him to have a little bit more of an opposite field approach at times. Uh, gets a little pull happy because who doesn't like to hit bombs? Um, <laughs> but I, I tell you, I, Isaiah could be really dynamic for us um, if he could see the ball a little bit deeper this year and, and drive the ball the other way. He's got a lot of talent, a lot of ability. Um, oh, shoot. I, I mentioned Torbett. Torbett's going to hit a top R order. He's he's kind of that Swiss Army knife that we have. Um, <clears throat> Drew Patrick, you know, he, he's a big, strong boy who's, who's physical. He can swing it. Um, you know, he's had a couple good knocks in, in live so far. Um, man, yeah, like we've, we've got, to what I believe, like we've, we've got some senior offense. Um, and, and I've seen some juniors really show me like, hey, I'm ready to play varsity baseball. And that's something we absolutely need that we haven't necessarily had in the past is these juniors coming up and just showing us with their bats, I can hit this pitching. And, you know, seeing that from a, a junior show to Ishiyama who might bat ninth for us and play second base, clearly the smoothest fielder in our program. He is buttery smooth. He's had a couple really well hit balls in, in live, a couple, you know, doubles to the opposite field, doubles in the left field gap. And, and he's like 5'6", 160. <laughs> so he's getting a lot out of his swing. <laughs> Asher Rata, a super athletic left-hander who will play the outfield and first base for us. Kid plays with a motor, uh, just a coach's dream, smiling from ear to ear. He's got his bling in his two ears, and he's just smiling, having a good old time. His hat might be cocked to the side a little bit, but he's, he's, a, lefty. he's a lefty, man. He's diving. He's full out in center field. He's, he's swinging the bat hard in, in hitter's counts. So, you know, we're, we're really excited um, with, with what we've got you know, offensively, defensively, and, and on the bump. And, you know, that's all to mention that Evan Mager, someone who's going to be a big part of our team on the mound and at the plate, uh, just had a season-ending uh, elbow procedure. So, you know, we're missing him. Yeah. And, and that dude that dude has been one of the hardest workers I've seen this offseason, knowing he's about to have surgery and still putting the work in. Um, so we're in a really good place. And uh, we're, we're hoping to do some things. <laughs> there you go. Uh, and something that I'm geared up for is opening day, which in we're not talking about the Cardinals opening day. We're talking about next Friday opening day. Uh, you guys are going to have a strong possibility of either um, throwing the first pitch of the Missouri high school season or, I guess, hitting Receiving. the first pitch yeah. of the high school season. <laughs> Hopefully yeah. we hit it, Kevin. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Uh, you guys are high noon, uh, right, at Viani to start yeah, high things noon off? at Viani against the Golden Griffins, game one. Oh, wow. Yeah, I told Great. you, we don't play stops. Right out of the gate. <laughs> yeah, yeah, go, right yeah, go hurt yourself. Game. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I mean, it's – and wow. when I when I got the schedule from Coach Scott, I was so fired up. I'm like, yes, let's go, Viani game one. Like, let's, let's see what we're made of right away. Go compete. Yep. Nick Stewart or J.D. Dorman coming right at you with the good fastball right Ooh. out of the gates. Ooh. Yeah, or Charlie Spoonhauer. Or, I mean, it's, or, or Spoonhauer, yeah. Great yeah. curveball. And, and you got to see Ferguson out of the pen. Like, it's you're going to see 90. <laughs> 90 yeah. might be the lowest yeah. pitch you see that day. So. Right. <laughs> and you, and, and you got to – your pitcher, you, you've got to construct some outs. Oh, without a doubt. Because you got to pitch around those bats. Well, that's a Division One lineup. My yeah, goodness. it's it is, it's gonna be fun. We're excited. I I like <laughs> that because that that to me, you know, and Kevin, you you deal with your pitcher and whatnot. You know the the art of constructing an out, especially against a lineup like this. How do you get outs? How do you keep your pitch count down? Get outs, miss barrels. Um, you know, you can't always just pitch out of the zone. No. Not against these guys, no, or else it'll just be a cha cha around the yeah. bases. Yeah, you got to go right at them. You got to go at them, and you got to believe that your stuff is good enough to beat them. Yeah. Uh, Pete Fairbank said one of the best quotes I've I've heard in a long time, and I'm not going to use the language he used, but <laughs> he essentially said, "My mentality when I get out on the mound is hit my stuff. It's like here's my stuff, hit it. I'm not going to try to pitch around you. I'm not going to be too cute. I'm going to throw my stuff in the zone." 
try to hit it. And I think more kids nowadays would, would benefit from that mindset yeah. instead of trying to throw the nastiest pitch or the nastiest or the hardest. Just go out there and compete in the strike zone. These hitters are going to get themselves out no matter how good they are. You got eight guys behind, seven guys behind you. Um, the game was designed for, for outs to be made. You know, make these guys put the baseball in play. So that's what that's what we're gonna hope to do. <laughs> so right. best that's, it's a mindset. It it's is a mindset. It absolutely right. is. Yeah. Best um, movie line ever, right? Quit trying to strike everybody out. Yeah, absolutely. Strike outs are fascist. Strike outs are fascist. <laughs> <laughs> Throw some ground balls, they're more democratic. <laughs> I know the adults listening to this show will get that reference. <laughs> yeah. I doubt the kids were right. That's un- that's unfortunate. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I did I did want to talk quickly about our jamboree that we have coming up on on Saturday. Um, that's our first ever competition being played on our turf field, so we're really excited about that. That's against two fantastic programs in Rockwood Summit and Lindbergh, two very well coached teams, two teams loaded with talent. Um, we're really really excited for that we have a really good relationship with those two schools and you know we can't wait to can't wait to get on the field and and see what each other are bringing to the to the table this spring <clears throat> take us through that jamboree setting for those that don't know how how does that work there's three teams yeah um do you, it, obviously do you do you play everyone in a full game do you guys split it up do you guys uh put situations out there is it kind of a controlled or do you just let the dudes go how does yeah. that work We've kind of agreed we like it to be a little controlled. Um, you know, so the home team will play the first game and the last game. So it'll be us versus Summit, Summit versus Lindbergh, Lindbergh versus us. Um, at the beginning of each inning, we're going to put a runner on first to create a little bit of action. And um, obviously, we don't care. if uh, We're not keeping score. So if the runner scores, it's, it's a ghost run. Like, we're not worried about that. It's more about – making our catchers work, making our pitchers work, making our defense work, maybe getting out at second instead of picking it up and throwing it to first. Um, you know, we try to incorporate we, – we try to get the majority of our players in in those situations just to get them some playing time against another team or, or some competition outside of ourselves. Um, but, you know, I mean, when you, when you go up against – Summit game one, you're going to see Darnell. Like, you just know you're going to see him for at least an inning. You know, you go up against Lindbergh game one, you're going to see Woodall for at least an inning. Um, and, like, you know you're going to see the dudes on the bump. Like, I've got eight to nine pitchers. Eight, My eight guys are going to throw one inning apiece. Um, yeah. And, you know, we're just going to see what we got. I think it, That's great. I like the jamborees that way. It's spring training, like you said. Absolutely. These guys have been pitching against – their own teammates, and no matter what, all of a sudden it's a different uniform in the batter's box. <laughs> the mindset changes, the mentality changes, and you're like, how do I get rid of the nerves and all the stuff? And I think that gives them an opportunity to do it in that setting. Without a doubt. And that's the that's what I love it for yeah. is it's it's baseball, but at the same time, you don't have the, the, the first game jitters or nerves, especially right. from those juniors who have never played varsity. <clears throat> yeah. It's different when someone's wearing a different uniform, isn't it? Than, it is. than your own. <laughs> it <laughs> is. The the mentality's different. You're like yeah. Yeah, that guy, if I hit him, I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> Especially if he's wearing red. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy. Ah, man. Hey, you know what? Nobody's trying to hurt anybody, but if you get hit, you get hit. It's the way it is. It's yeah, baseball. get on base. Uh, baseball, my, uh, yeah, my nephew, what my, my one nephew, he's a pitcher and he threw hard and, uh, you know, he, he would hit some guys every now and again, cause he pitched inside. He goes, Hey, baseball one one you don't want to get hit, get out of the way. Right. <laughs> but as a coach, we want you to get hit. <laughs> we want you yeah, to get on first base. Exactly. So. <laughs> there you go. So see, right. Yeah, it's just absolutely. baseball. That's it what is. it is. Uh, this suburban uh, conference, you know, from going over to the Edel Pool where Kirkwood is, you know, between this mix, um, you know, because Parkway Central, Webster Groves, um, I think Hazelwood West, they're all class five, right? West is six. West is six? Hazelwood West is six, yeah. Okay. So it's us in Central, 
Um, and Ladue, if, if they if move down, there, yeah. if they're there, yeah. they're class four, though, aren't they? I believe they're five. Are they five? Yeah, okay. they were five last year. They were five last year? Yeah. All those schools, Parkway West was a class five school last year, wasn't it? Uh, two years. They moved two to years? six. They moved to six last year, right, Kev? I think so, and it won't be determined for this season until a couple right. of weeks into things. Correct. Right. right. Yeah, but last year they were six. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, Eureka, Kirkwood, Lafayette, Lindbergh, Marquette, uh, West, and Summit. Mm. That's just a brutal pool. Absolutely. Uh, Kevin, how are your boys going to fare in that one? Well, uh, you know, we're, we're going to find out. Um, but they're, like Coach Wiggins said, the great thing about playing in that conference or league uh, is you're going to find out. You're, you're going to get challenged on a daily basis. And it, it is going to prepare, prepare you for district play because there, there's not going to be an off game that, or an off day. Uh, you're you're going to show up and you are going to face a dude on the mound. You're going to face deep lineups. Um, you go through those teams. Eureka had a phenomenal season last year. Um, they got a ton of guys back. Uh, they have one of my favorite hitters uh, in, in the state this year, and Brady Picarelli. Really? Picarelli oh, yeah. um, heading to Mizzou. Um, they got he's one of those lefty oh. personalities too, isn't he? Oh, we have yeah, a, big, we, big we, personality. Let's stop one second because we have a Picarelli pad in our third base dugout. Um, it's essentially <laughs> a soft pad that is where the helmet rack is, and that's because last year when they were putting it on us, um, Brady had just scored, and they did the hey, hey, hey celebration where you jump up and down, and Brady jumped up into the helmet rack and knocked himself out. <laughs> 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 so we now have what we call affectionately the Piccarelli pad. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's funny. <laughs> <laughs> that is funny. He's a big guy, so I can see how he'd get up there and um, – He hit the ground hard. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 it will be interesting. I, I like their positional players a lot. Uh, Kyle Ray, athletic shortstop. They have a sophomore named Craig Ringy, um, whose father was a really good player that is, is going to be a good player. Got varsity time last year. Um, Bro Brody Hunt does a really nice job on the infield. Uh, it's going to be interesting with their pitchers pitching. Uh, they got a they got a senior named Will Pfizer uh, that that's a nice arm, um, and then they got some young guys. Jackson Joggers is going to be uh, one to keep an eye on. Uh, big time basketball player, so might you know come along a little slower as the year goes. But that's going to be a, that's going to be a good team. Uh, Lafayette made that uh, big run through districts last year. I don't recall their seating, but they might have been like a five seed. Five, four, uh, five. Four, yeah, five. Yeah, five. Four or five, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we talked about that district beforehand, Brian, and, you know, we were calling that an upset, but we did say beforehand, wow, how deep this district is. And, you know, you always say, hey, there's five teams in this district that can win it, and people kind of roll their eyes. <laughs> well, this time there was five teams, and the fifth yeah, team yeah. won it. The fifth seed won it. Um, but that's another lineup that's also out. Uh, Michael Callahan's an electric player heading to Missouri State. Yep. Uh, Xander Schmidt um, heading to KU. Uh, athletic catcher will be one of our the better catchers um, in the area this year. Um, Will Gebhardt, um, Paul Pratt heading to Drury. So there's there's a lot, um, you know, of talent right there. And then, you know, you go over to the Pioneers, Kirkwood. Um, they have their pitching staff this year. They uh, Owen Nestledge is going to be one to keep an eye on. He's a three sport athlete. Um, Kind of like Eddie Ahern um, over at Parkway South. Um, Nestledge is the quarterback of the football team, basketball team, uh, can you know starting player there. Uh, but I, I, at the end of the day, I, I kind of like him most as a left-handed pitcher. Um, he's got a, a, a real chance there. Um, Kill Burkburgler um, heading to Umsel. Uh, on the mound is a mid to you know 87 ish guy with a with a wipeout slider. 
Um, Aiden Dennis uh, heading to Wash U, so congratulations <laughs> to him uh, on that part, but heading to Wash U to play baseball. Um, Drew Timp, um, uh, another lefty, and Brendan Ray, a senior left-handed pitcher. So there's there's definitely some depth there on the mound. Um, Rick Williams. And then positionally, it's fairly young. Uh, a lot of juniors um, and, and potentially a sophomore coming up. So we'll, we will see there, um, you know, but it, it, it will be uh, – it will be interesting, but I, I do know this, that every day, no, whether you're Re- Eureka, Lafayette, Kirkwood, um, you're going to g- have to show up and play good baseball if you expect to win playing in that conference. Oh, yeah, <clears throat> without a doubt. I mean, L- I mean Lindbergh alone, you know, with, with Woodall and, uh, you know, Riley Schultz, if, if Riley's fully healthy, that's a that's a solid one too. Um, you know, you got the sophomore, Austin Jones, who, who hit in the middle of that order as a freshman last year. Uh, Ethan Canarera, the the outfielder who showed really really well in a lot of the the uh, showcase circuits this this off season, and I know he played for you know the top gamers team this summer. Um, so I mean, you know, Lindbergh doesn't get as much love as they've gotten in the past, but I still I think they're going to be tougher than people are giving them credit for. Um, you know, obviously Michael Polite, <laughs> you know, playing yeah. playing shortstop and and going to Memphis, and then his little brother Jack could be ended up playing third for him. I mean, there's there's good players all around that yellow pool. It's it's wild. <clears throat> that, yes, absolutely. The, that Lindbergh team is going to be one to watch, and the Polite brothers um, are, are going to be a fun watch. Polite's one of the better defenders um, in the area. Um, so, and credit to them, they also kind of started this uh, public school trend on on the field turf, and yeah, they did. Yeah, <laughs> um, you, you know, kind of broke the ice for the statesmen and pioneers there as well. Yeah, we appreciate that. <laughs> hey, this is this is good stuff. The Green Pool, Afton, Clayton, Fox. I know we don't see Melville. Yeah, was really good last year. I think they've got quite a few guys coming back too, don't they, Kevin? They do. Um, Chase Mayberry. Um, uh, Jace. It, it was a fr- Jace. Yeah, yeah, Jace Mayberry uh, had a phenomenal freshman year for them. Um, and I want to give a shout out. I want to give a shout out. Cool, honestly. Well, and the, the, what's crazy is their class six. They had twelve yeah. kids yeah. on their varsity team last year, and their class six. That's a big school. <laughs> yeah. Is that right? Yes. Yeah. Wow. Shout out there, Jace Mayberry. Uh, we got our baseball mom show coming back. Oh, yeah. And uh, the the mom of Jace Mayberry, Jennifer Mayberry, is uh, the ho- one of our hosts of the baseball mom show awesome. that will be coming back at you. So stay tuned for that. Make sure. I, I love that stuff. We got to get our baseball moms back. And oh, yeah, we do. Talking baseball. Absolutely. And, they know uh, more Jace than we do. Jace is one of I've, – <laughs> I've seen him, you know, been knowing Jennifer. They – He's he's a good ball player. He's a great ball player. Yeah. My goodness. Yeah. yeah. He made an immediate impact at the varsity level. Hit a hit a grand slam off Cole Sturgeon. We were beating Melville ten nothing in the bottom of the seventh inning. And we had to bring a reliever in up ten nine with the bases loaded. Ooh. <laughs> so, yeah, Jace was a big part of that with that grand slam he hit. <clears throat> Because Pattonville, uh, they looked pretty good last year. We saw them against uh, St. Charles West. Uh, I think they'll be right there. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, yeah. basically, Melville and Pattonville, those two schools right there, I don't know too much. I mean, Clayton won their Pat- district. Pattonville will be led by uh, Mason Lee, um, yeah. who's going to be a tough left-hander. He also swings it. Uh, they have a, uh, a freshman to keep an eye on, uh, uh, Crumble. That oh, yeah, I would Caleb. expect to meet, um, make an impact this year potentially as a true freshman. So he's physical. Um, yeah. <clears throat> yeah. So there. I mean, if Ledoux's in that pool, I think Ledoux's got a shot. Um, I mean, obviously they graduated Will Moore. You know, he's at Purdue, but they've still got Kunitz going to Maryville, who can flat out swing it. Um, they've got. Uh, they have another middle of the order bat. Freeman. Right? Oh, they got Dev Freeman. Yeah, he'll be he'll play center yeah. field for him. Dynamic leadoff hitter type. They've got another. I thought they had another middle of the order bat. Um, it, uh, I think he's ahead. gone. Okay. Well, we did we did talk to a couple of kids that are going to do at the Illinois side. 
uh, they oh. were there. There was um, one who showed really well at one of your events. Yeah. And he goes and he goes to Ladue. I think he's a, a junior or a senior. Yeah, I think there are some. Sorry to kids. whoever you are, buddy, but it'll be interesting. You showed well. Hey, you know what? <laughs> this is the thing, folks. I, I want you to understand. You know, this is what it is. There are so many kids. Right there now. are. Yeah. Uh, it's hard to keep track of. But that ain't no lie. Oh, it is. <laughs> it's hard to keep track of all these kids. And and this is the thing. This is what you look at. We're we're talking about Eureka, Kirkwood, Lafayette, Lindbergh, Marquette, Parkway West, Rockwood Summit. All those teams are solid. I mean, Rockwood Summit is a real – they were class five last year, and I think they're going to be very good again oh, this year. Oh, they're going to be very good. For right? sure. They're always good. <laughs> uh, Hazelwood West, yeah. Ledoux, Northwest Cedar, of course. you got some big schools that you have, Parkway Central, <clears throat> South, Segment, well, all what we talked about. Northwest hit the lottery with freshman Carson Luthauser. Uh, Wait till you guys see this kid play baseball. He is special. <laughs> he, he trained with my 16U team all, all winter long. And you guys all know my 16U team. He yeah. fit right in and took some of the more explosive rounds of batting practice. He's a catcher, but dude could also play third or short at the varsity level. He is – he's the real deal. He is – he's very, very He's going to be he's a, a game-changing catcher immediately. Uh, and, yes. and that is nearly impossible as a freshman. Uh, yeah. You can get away with playing a freshman, and you know, at certain spots – a freshman catcher's tough, real tough. He's going to be able to do it and do it at a high level. Um, 100%. Yeah. One more year, you know, I think he's going to make an impact this season. Uh, by the time he's a sophomore, he's going to be known as the one of the areas, if not the area's top catcher and, and certainly a, a physical bat, yeah. middle of the lineup guy too. If you watched him play and you didn't know who he was, you'd assume he was a junior or senior. Okay, it's just, that's just how he goes about the game. I like the fact that a lot of these kids are staying in the school, the public schools. I love it. Right? <laughs> I mean, no offense. I mean, CBC, all those guys, they got talent. Don't don't get me wrong. But I think it's cool. I, I agree. Right? Absolutely. Yep. There are some really talented players. Like, we haven't named a single MCC school outside of Yanni, and we've named probably 50 really good players. Right. And there's so many more that we didn't get a chance to name or we don't even know about yet. That's – that's the coolest part about the spring, and you know it, is some kid who didn't go to any PBR events this spring or this winter is going to pop in the spring. Like, who the heck is that? Where did he come from? Yes. He's a really good baseball player, right? It's like there's – that's the best part about playing baseball is you get to see who can play this game, and that's – I love that. <clears throat> 100%. And I and I, I like to bring this up too, and, um, you know – I think there are certainly some great private schools out there. Um, but when we get into like whether we should be separating divisions for public and private, the public school is more than have held, held their own. If yes. you look at the state championships over the past good while, uh, you know, the public schools are on a very nice run. So I like Agreed. the, hey, let's, let's get in there and, and you're playing Viani right out of the gates. It's that's great. Um, Absolutely. You know, um, play, play up really good teams, challenge yourself. Uh, let's do the talking on the field and not worry about, you oh, know. Man. Yeah. I, who, I don't think the coaches no. have, we, we don't lose to a private school and say, well, you know, they've got kids from this area and that area. And we only pull from West. Yeah. We don't say that. We're like, Oh, we were right there with them and we had them, you know, like it's, it's no different to us. So <clears throat> There's pros and cons to every situation. I, I am well aware of that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's going to be. We won't get season. any deeper than that. <laughs> no. It's going to be a fun season. I think with, uh, you know, St. Louis Suburban, the GAC in this area, MCC, um, the SEMO conference, which we don't talk too much about going down that way. I, I mean, it was great talking to Coach. Um, Coach Roach from Jackson, we're going to get down there. Uh, Kevin's favorite venue. We're going to do a. We're going to get uh, get down to Jackson this year and and live stream uh, a game from there. Awesome! So we're excited about that. Uh, that's Put that on your to do list, Coach Wiggins. Take the Statesman down to Jackson for a game. Uh, I and would for love my to money, do that. The, the best atmosphere in high, for high school baseball in the state of Missouri. 
Oh, I'm I'm in, especially after this year. Once Sour graduates, you know, we like we're down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe wait one year. <laughs> we missed Bogan Paul last year. Don't have Sour this year. Else. Don't worry, but <laughs> they will. They'll have year. three more. <laughs> yeah, can, you guys see what Bogan Paul's doing down there, at Missouri State? Oh yes. yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. Goodness. Yeah, it's it's a special person. <laughs> <laughs> oh mercy. What is it? His first, I think his first home run was 114 miles an hour. Yeah. 30 degree launch, like 400 feet. Yeah. He was his first, Jeez. his first a three for three with two home runs. Yeah. You know, <laughs> it's just, he's having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> My goodness. I mean, normal, uh, this college baseball thing is easy. <laughs> uh, some kids make it look that way. And when you're, when you're 18 and you're making it look easy, you're different. Yeah, man. There's 24 and 25 year olds on the field right now. Oh and my if you're goodness. out there as an 18 year old and you're playing every day, you're different. <clears throat> Anyhow, but you got that down there, Kansas City, the suburban uh, area over there. Uh, we've we've talked about that. That is loaded up there, Southwest Missouri. It's lo- there. It's going to be a fun season. Class oh, yeah. five, class six, class four. Uh, we we get to go over. I, I talk with Coach Ash. Where our last game of the season is going to be Father Tolton and Southern Boone. Oh, nice! On May 9th nice at Southern Boone. So <clears throat> I, I'm looking forward to it. I think there's going to be a lot of really good baseball played this year. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing. Um, I always love the knowledge this guy brings. He's dropping some knowledge here, Kevin. <laughs> I gotta Williams be prepared. Today. <laughs> yes, indeed. I gotta be yeah. prepared. I I gotta know everything about my opponents. <laughs> hey, that's how you win, right? Yeah, that's how we try. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we try. No, no, coach, you're working. You're we're, working. We're working. We're working. That's, that's, that's what right. Is. I always say. Right. I I hear these kids, and I I'm. This is a if you if you hang around me very long, Drew can tell you this. Um, Trying is the lament of the failed. That's, if you're not working, so good. if you're not working, you, you may not succeed all the time. Yeah. But boy, I, I'm trying. That's the lament of the yeah. failed. You're I don't trying, like that answer though. as a coach. I hey, man, that. I need you to do this. Well, I'm trying, coach. That to me tells me you're not trying. <laughs> you're not working. <laughs> you're not working. Get to work. Just right. work. Yeah. Because if you're working, you 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 see the kids that are working absolutely as opposed to trying. Oh yeah, I don't care. That's just my <laughs> no, humble you're, opinion. You're not wrong. You are not wrong. You know, so uh, you know, let's let's get out and work. Keep working. Keep yeah. working, young man. That that's that that's what will get you where you need to go. You're, yeah, put in uh, that work. Yo, know, this doesn't have anything to do with Webster, but I I want to shout out the guys that I coach in the summer. My my sophomores, um, I believe every one of them, maybe one or two are not only on varsity as sophomores, but they're impact players in the starting lineup. Um, I couldn't be more proud of those guys and, and the work that they put in over the last couple of years to make an immediate impact on varsity as soon as possible. So I felt Love like it. I had to say that. <clears throat> Love it. Yeah. Hey. Got uh, a fun group at that age. That's that's going to be a, a, <laughs> over the next couple of years. That's, um, that's yeah. going to be a lot of fun to follow a lot of those guys. Absolutely. <clears throat> Hey, youth baseball to high school baseball to summer ball. It's it. There's a lot of talent in this area. It's a lot of fun to cover. It's a lot of fun to watch. Yeah. Uh, FYI, guys. Um, uh, I was telling, and I don't know if I've said this to you. Not, I was telling Coach Wiggins we are doing this. We're announcing it. It's pushing. We just had the the show yet uh, on Tuesday with uh, Coach Baron Mathis. Uh, he's the recruiting coordinator at uh, Midland uh, Baseball in Tennessee. He is going to be hosting a new show, uh, a new podcast on uh, Youth Baseball Midwest covering Tennessee. Awesome. Uh, he's got quite the lineup coming for you, too. Uh, this guy uh, blew me away when I started looking at the people he's talked to and the guests that are wanting to come on his show. I'm going to leave it for Coach Mathis, so <laughs> it'd be somebody. But you, you want to subscribe. You don't want to miss this. He's going to be talking cool about names. <laughs> Huh? I heard some cool names. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just wow. And uh, he's going to be talking about high school and youth uh, summer baseball in Tennessee and around that area up into Kentucky. He's got a lot of great connections. So we're happy to add Coach Mathis to our uh, list of contributors, and he's going to be hosting that show. 
uh, we're, we're, we're growing, booming. It's a lot of fun, a lot of baseball to be played, right? Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Looking forward to it. So make sure, please, take a moment, hit the subscribe button. Support what we're doing. We appreciate it. Hit the dinger next to it there because that's what we do. Chicks dig the long ball. Although you want those guys hitting them in the gap, right, Coach? I do, yeah. I absolutely do. Yep. Home so, runs are mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> I sound so old. <laughs> I'm with you, though. I'm with you. Uh, that will get you notifications for upcoming episodes such as this. We do appreciate that very much. And we do appreciate Coach Wiggins taking the time uh, close to the season. Come oh, on. Hey, man. Happy to be on. Appreciate it very much. A lot of fun talking to you. I appreciate it. Yeah, you too. As always on the Prime Sports uh, Midwest, Colin Link, the guru himself, Mr. Kevin Mulder. Uh, big season coming up, buddy. We're looking forward to it. Well, looking forward to it, Coach Wiggins. Best of luck, th- luck this spring. Uh, Thank you. Save one night in balling in April. <laughs> um, Understood. <laughs> hey, I love this stuff. See, that's what I mean. Uh, this high school baseball, I do it all the time. That's why we got the East hat right there. I'm a homer uh, for East. That's where my kids went. That's where my son played. I root for East. I mean, I'm going to talk about it the right way. Sure. But that's what this is. These are friendly rivalries. They absolutely are. I mean, I, I grew up in Webster. I played at Webster. I coached freshman ball at Webster. Um <clears throat> Yes, obviously we like to talk trash towards Kirkwood, but I mean, yeah. heck, when, when we grew up, we played Kirkwood Legion with all the dudes from Kirkwood. So yeah, I mean, it's it's Same a friendly team. rivalry. They got the friendship dance at at our high schools instead of a homecoming. So it's it's all in good fun. Absolutely, absolutely. We need to win a we need to win a Friday night game against you guys, though. So that's. <laughs> That and winning the district are on the list. There you go. <laughs> Got to have goals. Got to have goals. Got to have goals. That's right. That's right. Kevin, I'm hoping next week, uh, folks, and this is my intent uh, as we were, were, like I said, we're shortly coming up on the season. I'm hoping to get Mr. Kevin Mulder, Mr. Andy Urban, and, and uh, Mr. Diego Solaris all on the show next week Ooh. and uh, get their predictions, get some bold predictions, see what's going to happen around this area. It'd be a lot of fun. Awesome. So uh, I'm hoping we can make that happen. Okay. There you go. Look at that. He's like, yeah. hey, he's so excited. I can tell. <laughs> Look at the face. <laughs> oh, wow. I got to make predictions? <laughs> Heck yeah. <laughs> Even if they're wrong. I'm wrong all the time. It don't matter. I think the past couple of years I've done pretty good with the predictions on the final fours. Um, and per, I, I know I nailed the state champion back to back years. Um, yes, I did. That's impressive. He was on the Liberty North bandwagon, baby. That's Gets impressive. Saying, ah, I'm telling you, man. And it's tr- and then Tate McGuire. He's also, you know, he's he's going on Arkansas. Arkansas, yeah. Right. Not easy to get on the on the oh, field no. as a freshman in oh, Arkansas. No. <laughs> I mean, so. You, you see why. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. It does. So a lot of good stuff. Guys, appreciate it again. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Have a great day in the Lord. All you pitchers, Kevin, tell them what they need to do. Throw a ton of strikes. Hey, I like that. Yep, <clears throat> yep. Got some advice for the hitters? Hit nukes. Man. <laughs> he just said, I'm a gap to gap guy. I know, yeah. It's Homer's hit them, a mistake. Hit, hit nukes, ain't. guys. Hit nukes. Hit nukes. <laughs> we'll see y'all next time. <laughs>